silent and motionless in, in a flat, white, Eucharistic host captured in the tabernacles of the world. Why? Why does God choose the Eucharistic life? But I'm saddened to think of all the people who have no idea what is taking place. They pass by churches every single day. In their heart, they're searching for meaning. And little do they know, little do they realize that the meaning they look for is found in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is waiting for them there. You must eat my body and drink my blood in order to have that salvation. And people knew he meant it literally because he didn't say, oh, hey, everyone, I'm just joking, you know, especially after they said, whoa, this is a hard saying. How can we listen to this? He was speaking to me from that tabernacle and he was challenging me. Am I willing to turn my back on him who's done so much for us? who fed the 5,000, who walked on water. The St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation, in partnership with Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network, presents a podcast for families in crisis. Hi, and welcome to a podcast from the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. And DeSantis here back again with Nikki Kelly, our board president. Nikki, great to have you back again. Hi, and great to be here. Yeah, it's, it's a really good series that we're doing for families in crisis and we're doing our 10 saints series and so this one is episode four and the last time we talked we had a podcast about john paul ii john paul the great that was an amazing podcast and so this one is about a special saint where there's even a shrine like a local shrine in in our area where we live uh the, the national shrine of saint rita of kasha is on Broad Street in Philadelphia. And so I highly recommend for people listening to this podcast is that if you've never been there, to please do go and check it out. Now, I'm going to start out by reading just a very short bio about her, and then we can talk more fully about her. So uh, she was born uh, Margarita Lotti. She lived in 1381, and she died in May of 1457. She was an Italian widow and an Augustinian nun, venerated as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church, of course. Uh, her husband died. When her husband died, she joined the Augustinian community of religious sisters, where she was known both for practicing mortification of the flesh and for the ep efficacy of her prayers. Various miracles are attributed to her intercession, and she's often portrayed with a bleeding wound on her forehead, which is understood to indicate a partial stigmata. Pope Leah XIII canonized Rita on May 24th of 1900. Her feast day is on May 22nd every year. Uh, at her canonization ceremony, she was bestowed on the title of Patroness of Impossible Causes. While known in many Catholic countries, Rita became known as the patron of abused wives and heartbroken women. Her incorrupt body remains in the Basilica of St. Rita of Kasha. So let's just start out with Mickey. Let's talk about your opinion, your thoughts on St. Rita. Sure. And you know, it's funny. Um, you mentioned about the shrine that's in, I would say, the heart of uh, South Philadelphia. And 
the shrine actually is home to some of her relics, generally speaking. And also to keep in mind too, South Philadelphia, you know, for the longest time has had a history of having, has been like a, has like a section in town where there's been quite a bit of Italian ghettos. And I actually recall that I had a grand cousin that was supposed to get married at a neighboring parish, um, St. Monica's. Unfortunately, it was burned down accidentally. And they had to move their wedding, actually, to St. Rita's Shrine. And it's uh, that place that actually that place does have a, a place in the heart of my family when it comes to uh, momentous occasions. And one of them is the is uh, holy matrimony. So I remember that quite well. In fact, my mom actually was, if I'm not mistaken, I believe she was a bridesmaid in that wedding. So she remembers that day quite well um, before she was getting, uh, you know, drunk on champagne. I, I don't want to, you know, not like, a, not like a bad way, but she was celebrating the occasion and sure she has some memories to share with me. She talks about that from time to time with me. So, but also too, for our foundation, and we actually have had a couple of retreats at that shrine. It's very fitting, you know, because St. Rita herself, she had, has had, and we're going to discuss more about this as we unpack the life of her, um, the life of this great saint of improbable cause. I'm sorry, impossible cause, I should rather say. And she can relate to many of us, especially when it comes to marital issues. And and of course, I I, I don't go to that shrine very often, but whenever I do go there, I feel like I'm walking her footsteps, especially when she went through so much agony and so many uh, social sufferings, I would like to add. And of course, we're going to discuss that a little more, but wow. And I couldn't think of a better saint. To, we, we couldn't think of a better saint to have for this episode than St. Rita of, of Cassia. Amen. Amen. And I like, it. actually, that is the pr correct pronunciation, Cassia, right? And so... If you haven't done so, I don't please. want to offend any Italians. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, uh, check out their website. They have a beautiful website for the St. Rita Shrine. It's it's simply Saint S A I N T Rita Shrine.org. And I love the website. And as Mickey said, we have actually done two retreats. We did one in July of 2022, which was a basic retreat for families in crisis. And then we also did one at the end of October this year. And that one was for people who are dealing with health crisis. So please do keep an eye out on our programs and events page at nonatis.org and learn about other collaborative work because we really like working with the Augustinian friars and we really like having retreats there. So we hope to do some more in the future. Now, she married a gentleman by the name of if you read her bio, which is admittedly on the website, Paola Mancini, and she had two sons. And I am going to read a little bit of, about her life because there was a difficult situation. It says, in the troubling political climate of the times, there was often open conflict between families. Paola, her husband, was the victim of one such conflict, and he was murdered when their sons were still young. The expectation of society at the time was that the boys should avenge the murder of their father to defend the family honor. Rita, however, influenced by peacemaking, making example of her own parents, pledged to forgive her husband's killers. She faced a steep challenge. However, in convincing her sons to do the same, tradition, ha tradition has it that she often pointed out to them the image of the crucified Christ and the fact that he forgave those who killed him. Within a year, however, both sons succumbed to a deadly illness leaving Rita not only a widow, but also childless. Following these tragedies, Rita placed her trust in God, accepting them and relying on her deep faith to find her way. After 18 years of marriage, Rita felt called to a second but familiar vocation to religious life in the Augustinian convent. So isn't that amazing that she underwent such family turmoil and how her prayers made a difference for her family. And even though sadly her sons died, don't we all know people who have such crisis where families aren't getting along, where there are people who won't talk to one another, where there are people who would wish someone else dead, I hate to say. 
maybe they've never they wouldn't act on it. You hope they don't act on it. But it's sad to hear these stories, but how Rita was that peacemaker. And I think that's an amazing thing for you who are listening that maybe your family is affected by divorce. Maybe there's other some other type of family distress. Maybe there are relationship issues, people that just aren't getting along. Maybe it's mother and daughter. Maybe it's father, son, or father and daughter. Maybe it's mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. I mean, who knows? There's all kinds of ways that families are having those kinds of relationship issues. So Mickey, I don't know if you wanted to speak on that because isn't she a wonderful saint for those people that pray so hard that others would get along and be able to live peacefully. Yes. And in fact, I think we were just discussing this um, prior to recording this podcast, but during the 29th Sunday of ordinary time, we were reminded for the current uh, year cycle, year C. And by the way, we'll be going back to year A um, when Advent approaches this want to put that out there but anyway i wanted to say that yes in fact uh saint rita is known as the patron saint of impossible causes and she is i honestly think she's a living example of overcoming many of these impossible causes as a matter of fact catholicphilly.com recent they have a tradition of profiling the ordination class from saint charles Borromeo seminary and there was actually one in the most recent, um, in the most in, in the most recent ordination class, who uh, was working as a pharmacist by trade, of course. And then one day, and she and he was actually slipping away from his, you know, from the Catholic faith, until one day he decided to visit Saint Rita's shrine for mass, and then he wound up just praying there. And next thing you know, you know, push come to shove. He felt a yearning to, you know, to answer God's call to, to, to heed the call to being a priest. And that actually paid dividends. And now he's a priest. I'm not sure where he is now, but, you know, there's, there's nothing. No, I mean, of course, we're also reminded, too, that nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Hey, that's a, that's a good story to hear. And. Her life, I mean, if you think about it, at the heart of all that she did was prayer. And she even received, as they refer to it, as that partial stigmata on, it was on her forehead. So it was very prevalent, right? It was very prevalent on her face. And the rest of her bio goes on a little bit more, but there was, of course, the disagreements in the family with her husband and then the other family. It says in this bio that she went to her husband's family and exhorted them to put aside their hostility and stubbornness. They were convinced by her courage and agreed. The rival family astounded by this overture of peace also agreed. The two families exchanged a peaceful embrace and signed a written agreement, putting the vendetta to rest forever. A, fre a fresco depicting the scene of the peace embrace was placed on the wall of the church of St. Francis in Cascia, an enduring reminder of the power of good over evil and a testament to the widow whose forgiving spirit achieved the impossible. I mean, isn't it so true? And I'm sure that priests have heard this so much in confession that one of the main sins that people confess over and over and over again, and they have a hard time with is, is forgiveness, or I should say unforgiveness. And so if you're listening to this podcast and maybe you and your family have gone through some kind of a tragedy where you feel some, sen some sense of unforgiveness toward another person or another family or an ex-husband or an ex-wife or a neighbor or a priest or someone, someone. And you need to find it in your heart to be able to help have God help you forgive that person. Well, she's the saint for you. She's the, inter the saint to intercede for too. And so... I just think that that's a wonderful thing for our listeners and even honestly, Mickey, for you and I ourselves here on this podcast, right? We've all been affected by unforgiveness, haven't we? Some way, shape or form. I mean, you and I are both also, you know, children uh, of adult children of divorce. We have a whole other podcast for that too, which 
our listeners can go to our YouTube channel at Philly Nonatus and listen to that one. But I mean, people who have gone through some kind of family trauma, right? And unfortunately, sometimes that does cause a, a bit of unforgiveness. So let's talk about that and unpack that a little bit, Mickey. I don't know if you want to share any personal stories, but I mean, anything about forgiveness and or unforgiveness to help our listeners. Well, and I have to be honest with you, forgiving has been, I have been, I've been guilty of not forgiving people or receiving and or receiving forgiveness over the years. I feel like, and I honestly, I just want to tell people that, that you do not want to hold a lot of anger in your heart if someone has done something to you. First off, it's not healthy. And if you if you let it build up long enough, it's going to hurt you. Trust me. That's one of the most important things I would like to just want to get across. One of the, This is an p- important point that we want to get across. And of course, I'm sure, Anne, you want to build up on that once I, you know, when I finish this thing. But I guess there, if there's another thing that if I can give a concrete example is that there have been times where I was hurt by someone, whether, but I mean, it's, it's like one thing, like, you know, maybe you bump into someone, you know, it's just like, oh, oh sorry about that. And, you know, it's just, you know, forgive, forget, move on kind of thing. But I also feel like too, that there are times that people do hurt you and you know, you find it, you, you find it a challenge. I don't want to say it's hard, but I find it challenging that you want to forgive that person, especially, you know, no matter how hard it hurts. But I feel like if we look at the example of, you know, St. John Paul the Great, who was the subject of our previous podcast, he knew in his heart that he had to forgive the person who would have martyred him. You know, because, because all, all he did in life was he brought down the Iron Curtain in, in, you know, in the Soviet Union. You know, without firing a missile, without firing a shot, you know. But the other, th- I think for me personally is that I have seen firsthand I have seen firsthand what it's like to you know, have people hurt me. And then of course there are times that I inflicted harm towards people. Or maybe I insult them or, you know, what have you. And I still endure it today, you know, especially when I'm outside of the abortion facilities. Because one place that I go to frequently, there's like this potty mouth security lady. And I'm hoping she's listening to this. And she's always like jeering at me. She's always like trying to make a mockery of, of like, you know, the things that I'm doing. And just want to say this to Heather, if you're listening to this, you're forgiven. But now you must repent and walk away from that industry now. And another person that I want to share about is an abortion worker. Eight years ago, he assaulted me, another pro-lifer. And I haven't had a chance to do this yet, but I want to use this platform to do so. Christopher J. Hill. If you're listening to this podcast, which I hope you are, I want you to know that you're forgiven for what you did to me back in 2014. I forgive you for what you did. At the same time, I'm calling you to repentance. Repent now before it is too late. I will certainly pray for you and for those you mentioned. Because forgiveness is something for all of us. I mean, everybody has, you know, someone that they, someone or maybe even more than one person that they need to deep, more deeply forgive. Right. And, and like you said, you forgave the two people that you just mentioned, Mickey, and calling them out to invitationally, right. And invitation to, um, to walk with the Lord, 
you know, but everything's in God's time, isn't it? Nothing, nothing's in our time. Uh, we're all invited to walk in the light, right? And part of that is when we accept all the gifts that God has given us and others. And so keeping that in a positive note there. But um, for those listening to this podcast, though, who may or may not know or feel that you're able to do that, I think that this saint is someone that you can intercede to. Now, I have a special prayer I'd like to read, and maybe we can kind of recollect as we pray. Um, I found this prayer to St. Rita of Cassia, and it's on daily-prayers.org. Now, it's actually a much longer prayer than I'm going to read, but there's a basic prayer to St. Rita that I will read to all of you. So let us just kind of recollect ourselves right now and just ask for her to help all of us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Dear St. Rita, during your entire life on earth, you found your happiness by following the will of our Heavenly Father. Help me to be trusting of God in all his plans for me. Help me this day to give myself to him as you did, without limit, without fear, without counting the cost. Help me to be generous in serving the needs of others, patient in all difficulties, forgiving toward all who injure me. Help me to learn more deeply the great mystery of the cross of Jesus, so that by embracing it as you did, I may come to experience its power to heal and to save. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I just, I like that prayer because one of the things that it says in it is that to give myself without limit, fear, and counting the cost. Maybe we can just spend a few minutes talking about that because I think that for all of us in order to get more healing in our lives and for forgiving not only other people, but ourselves is that we have to realize how all loving and all powerful our God is and that there isn't really anything that he won't forgive, but we do need to humble ourselves and go to him. Now, not everybody who's listening to this podcast is Catholic as Catholics. Of course, those who are listening, that are Catholic. We have, the sacrament of reconciliation, sacrament of confession. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about that too, Mickey? I know that uh, going to confession has meant a great deal to you in your own life. Well, and I think something that I, you know, it's funny you mentioned confession. I, I recall seeing a kind of like a, a Catholic cartoon on one of the, catholic pages on social media and it depicts a short line for a confession but there's like a long line for the eucharist now i think the pro and i think when i look at that i always think of the problem with catholicism today particularly here in the united states without going into too many detail i feel like people seem to forget that it's great that you receive jesus but at the same time, we have to remember to receive his mercy force the first before we receive his precious body and blood every given Sunday, or if we're ambitious enough, daily. Now, to get to that, now to mention that point, I think that if we, for me, confession has meant a great deal to me. I say that because I am not afraid to seek God's mercy. And no matter how many times I've messed up, no matter how many times I fall, you know, the thing is about falling is you have two options. One, you stay down or you get back up and you, if you fight harder, you you look at the example of Jesus when he fell while he was carrying his cross to Calvary, he could have just stayed down for the count. Instead, you know, he fell three times before he finally got to Calvary. But like, but like that, 
I mean, we have a choice too. We could just stay down for the count, or we could we could keep going. And let's face it, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. That is to seek his mercy. The best time, the best times I say you go to confession is, I mean, if you haven't been to confession in a year, two, five, however many years, make a point to go to confession now. Seek his mercy. It's not going to come to you, but you must go to him. And let's face it, there's going to come a time that we're not going to, you know, break the commandments, but instead we're going to sin against the virtues. And I think we're kind of seeing that now with everything that's going on today. And there are capital sins in the world. And if there's one thing I would offer to you is if you haven't been to confession, don't worry, you know. Just, you know, pick up a guide on how to make a good confession and, you know, lay out all of your sins. And there's some sins you probably have, you know, are struggling to, you know, break the hat of like trying to get over. That's OK. God's merciful and he will be patient with you. But the only thing you must the first thing you must start is to forgive yourself. And then you seek God's mercy. He is waiting for you. Mm, thank you very, very much. And uh, not only are you speaking words of your own wisdom, but helping to direct people to that correct direction, the good direction of getting to confession. And I just found something online I thought would be a good resource for people. If you go to a website called Catholics comehome.org, catholicscomehome.org, there is actually a drop down for confession. And one of the things it says is, why should I go to confession? And the answer that's on the website says it, if you haven't been to confession in a while, the Catholic Church wants to welcome you back and invite you to participate in this beautiful sacrament of healing. Take a step in faith. You'll be surprised about how free you feel after taking part in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So many Catholics describe incredible feelings of peace, joy, relief, and love that they never expected. Jesus is calling you to experience his mercy in this way too. Now just remember for those listening that might not be Catholic or might not know this, but you do have to be in person. Now the only reason I mention that is with our foundation once in a while, not that often, but once in a while, we will get a request asking for one of our priests to do confession on the phone. And basically the church does forbid that. So you would have to reach out to a priest that's, you know, in, in distance of where you are and maybe your own parish community or maybe somewhere nearby, but check out this website too of the Catholic Catholics come home.org. But um, I think this podcast has been really good because not only have we gotten a chance to talk about St. Rita and about her life, but also about some of these important ways to find healing. Um, I didn't know, Mickey, if you had any other advice for people. Um, you know, this this podcast is for families in crisis, individuals and families in crisis. And when we look at Rita's life, we look at forgiveness, we look at prayer, we look at devotion to our Lord, Blessed Sacrament, but we also look at someone who was able to endure great suffering, almost like Christ. I mean, she had the stigmata on her forehead. So maybe before we end, let's just talk about a little bit about how those who are listening who might be going through tremendous trauma, tremendous difficulties, and trying to find some kind of consolation. Um, I didn't know if you had any words of wisdom for them because you know, families go through a lot. And, and I think with people that reach out to us, whether it's someone affected by divorce, separation, relationship issues, job loss, sickness, loss of a loved one, there's some depression and sadness that can come. Um, any words of wisdom for them on accepting that sadness, sacrifice, and getting through? Well, and I feel like 
you know, we look at our culture today and, you know, no, not many people are going to come from a perfect home. Look at us. You know, we didn't come from a broken, we didn't come from a perfect home at all. Instead, we came from a broken home. But I think if there's one thing I could offer to those that are going through some of the most challenging storms in their life, I first and foremost would offer this. God knows your struggles. He knows your plans. He knows the plans for you. He also knows your heart. The one thing you must do is there are two things to do. First off, do not run away from him. I always think of when you watch those horror movies, when you have someone that is trying to escape a maniacal killer, you're like, you know, kind of like the Jason Voorhees or the Halloween movies. I always think of that one person is trying to escape being part of that massacre. And then along the way, you also see that the main, like, you know, the, you know, wherever the monster or whatever it is, is following that person. And that per that, that monster or killer or whatever it is, main goal is to kill that person. And that, that, let's face it, that, that monster is, is going to do whatever it takes to accomplish its goal. Likewise, no matter how no matter how hard you try to hide or run from God, when you're going through so many of life's adver- adversities, he's going to run harder. He's going to run faster like a cheetah in order to catch up. Cuz you may have all these plans in the world, but you know what God's going to laugh at them. In turn, God wants you to follow his plans. He wants you to follow him. And if we don't follow him, guess what? It's going to come back at us when we face the ultimate judgment. If you're struggling, my first advice for you is reach out to a trusted family member. Reach out to a priest. Reach out to your spiritual director. If you don't have one, find one. But most importantly, a fervent and persistent prayer life. Just like with how St. Rita was able to navigate many of toughest challenges, even John Charter Waters helped to become one of the most greatest saints in the Catholic Church. And she is the patron saint of impossible causes. Most of us are encountering those right now. Pray for her intercession, most importantly, but at the same time, turn to God, and he will make everything possible. Mm. Beautifully stated, Nikki. Thank you so much. I I really enjoyed this podcast, and I'm hoping that people listening out there have too. Uh, You mentioned one particular thing that I definitely want to make sure that I mentioned to people listening. You mentioned spiritual director. Now, that's someone who helps to guide you along the path of your spiritual life. Usually it's a once a month appointment. Most of the time it's in person, but sometimes you can do an online or a phone call as well. Well, great news because we're offering that now. Um, Our Mercedarian Friars, the, the priests that founded us, actually are offering appointments. So all you need to do is go to our website, which is nonatis.org. And there is a drop down under priestly consultation. There's one for spiritual direction too. Now, great news. We do it for free. Now, not everyone does though. And all of our priests, obviously they are trained um, master divinity. You know, they have the background in counseling, um, not so much the, you know, psychological counseling, right? But pastoral counseling. So they have that knowledge. So make sure that you set up your free spiritual direction appointment. 
and or, of course, we have our pastoral care appointments too, which are dis to discuss any family or individual issues that you have that you would need to get some help and prayer too. Now, I also want to say one more thing before we end. <laughs> we also, uh, there is also a drop down on the St. Rita Shrine website for prayer intentions. And I think it's very special because it's specifically regarding St. Rita. And it says on the drop down here, let us pray for you and be with you and trust your prayers and petitions to the loving care of St. Rita of Cassia and her powerful intercession. Prayer requests are kept confidential and placed in a petition basket below the relic of St. Rita in the lower shrine. We will remember your intentions during each of our daily masses. So go to that website again at stritashrine.org and make sure that you um, let them know what your prayer intentions are. And for that matter, go to nonatis.org. We also have a, a drop down for prayer intentions and our prayer intentions are also confidential and shared with our Mercedarian Friars community. So Mickey, thank you so much again. Um, I do wanna mention our next podcast will be on St. Teresa of Calcutta. So that's gonna be a beautiful podcast. Be sure to tune in. Mickey, thanks again. And thank you so much for having me. And thank you all for listening. Absolutely. So remember to stay in touch with us at nonatus.org. We'd love to hear from you. God bless. And we'll see everyone next month on the Families in Crisis podcast, 10 Saints series with Mickey Kelly and Ann DeSantis. God bless. Thank you for listening to this podcast. For more information about the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation, visit nonatus.org or email director dot s r n f at gmail dot com why does god remain silent and motionless in, in a flat white eucharistic host captured in the tabernacles of the world why why does god choose the eucharistic life And I'm saddened to think of all the people who have no idea what is taking place. They pass by churches every single day. In their heart, they're searching for meaning. And little do they know, little do they realize that the meaning they look for is found in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is waiting for them there. You must eat my body and drink my blood in order to have that salvation. And people knew he meant it literally because he didn't say, oh, hey, everyone, I'm just joking, you know, especially after they said, whoa, this is a hard saying. How can we listen to this? He was speaking to me from that tabernacle, and he was challenging me. Am I willing to turn my back on him, who's done so much for us, who fed the 5,000, who walked on water,